Okay, so my son wanted a, needed a new laptop for school. There's a lot of choices for a parent, isn't there? Chromebooks, stuff like that. And I came to the conclusion of getting him a framework 12 inch laptop. The reason behind this is, you know, basically it's a cool laptop, first start thing. It, you can flip the thing over and it becomes a tablet as well, which is super cool, which Macs don't do. The Macs are super pricey. And it's sort of like, I don't didn't know about that. The the framework's pretty reasonably priced for what it was. Um, but yeah, but I like the whole framework ethos as well. So I can, you know, pull bits out of it, upgrade bits, stuff like that. And I love the idea of him being able to build his, basically his first computer. I didn't think his first computer would be a laptop that he'd build. But I loved him, you know, having a go at that. So I thought it combined two things. If you, the other thing is, obviously, there's a Marchy title on this video. If you go over, and I'll just do this now, if you go over to the um, framework website, it says, Arch Linux requires setup, some risk, medium difficulty, out of all the installations on there. And if you've um, if you've sort of been following along, you will see that you can basically put a Marchy onto anything and it works without any extras. And, you know, it's a rolling release, Arch, Arch Linux, you know, the one, um, and it's brilliant. So I thought what we'd do is we'd look at the assembling the framework laptop with my son's going to build it. We all go through the framework laptop. And then basically I'll also, we, I bought the minimum I could. So I didn't even buy the power supply. I bought all of the parts separately and I'll put links to those to bring the cost down. And then basically I'll just show you how quick and easy it is to install a march and get it running on a framework, which is great because obviously frameworks have got those like the framework key. So that's your super key. So that's great. So, so there you go. That's what I'm sort of going to going to work through, and I'll talk over the top of it, and uh, as we go through it. So, let's dive in. So here we go. So the laptop's turned up. I've got it out of the box. I'm just going through this packaging and stuff like that. They're really nicely packed. It's all obviously recyclable material, things like that. A laptop's not super heavy. It's quite, it's a nice size. Um, I think it's probably heavier than a MacBook Air or something like that. But I mean, it's it feels, you know, chunky. And then there's the, in the top there, you've got the keyboard. And then as you see, I bought the bare minimum. So I bought the plug-in bits for the side. There's a sort of, uh, I don't know, there's a leaflet in there. I, didn't even, I don't think I even opened that yet. They give you a screwdriver and then you've got the, the sort of um, I.O. which come as sort of USB-C connectable things, which is super clever because if you buy any of their range, these are interchangeable with it. So if I bought a desktop, which is like, you know, a, 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 you know their, their framework desktop, you could use those in the front of it. So there you go. So now I'm going to hand this over to my son and he's going to start building. And there he is. So this was interesting for him. He's never done this before. And you can see some bits on the right-hand side of the screen there. Um, we bought a crucial 16 gig sodium. It's super cheap. Bought a one terabyte M2230, the short um, N, N, you know, what are they, um, NVMe, because that's the space that's inside there. And also got an anchor, I think it is, power unit. That was 16 pounds. And so, yeah, so there's all the bits. He's getting all the bits out for you. It's interesting screwdriver i forgot to mention the screwdriver you get the um same color screwdriver as your unit which is sweet and there you go so he's going to battle through the packaging now so it's interesting isn't it you know when you're a parent and you buy computers for kids the first computers when i built him his gaming thing and he loves it and it's brilliant but obviously when it comes to the laptop for school you get sometimes lumped with having to get a chromebook which is like woefully underpowered yeah i know they do the job but there's not much life in them after that but because he's going to want to, you know, he does drawing and art and stuff like that. So, you know, and I don't know why I'm an iPad, because then, you know, keyboards are really powerful tools. So you get stuck in this limbo. So you're sort of not going to get a Mac, super expensive. It doesn't have a touchscreen. screen, not going to get an iPad. So you're sort of stuck. So it's a Windows machine, but which one? You now, there's only two system integrators that I like. That's System76, because they make pop and they make amazing computers and framework. And it's really handy. I mean, look, there we go. There it is. We'll come to this in a minute. It's got pogo pins on the back. It's very clever, no ribbon. So I thought, yeah. And it's not hugely expensive. Um, 
you can pick up all the parts, it's easier, it's easy to spec because they list all the parts and you can get them off the shelf anyway, all the bits you need for it. So yeah, so don't watch this with him with a knife, he's quite good, but um, you know, there's a bit of camera wobble here. This is probably my heart racing as he's using a knife, but not to worry. But yeah, so it sort of was like a no-brainer, you know, I didn't want to get an Adele. Um, and it's not a business machine and these are quite fun there. They've got a great design, this colour, um, you know, and it's not a Mac because I think that's a bit too, um, he's interested in modding things like this with his games. So hopefully that will drift into sort of looking more at coding stuff, which you're a little bit lumped in with um, Microsoft, it's not Microsoft with uh, Macs, aren't you? You're sort of in that walled garden, but with this, I mean, I, after I installed Amachi, sadly, I had to put Windows 11 on it for, for school. But I mean, you know, I think it was too big of a leap to get him to do it. And here we are, we're inside it now. And it comes with this great plastic cover, all the bits there. So, and it's quite identifiable what you need to put. I didn't even show him the instructions. I just pointed out the parts to him. So there we go. Pull that off. And this was interesting. There's two parts, literally two bits you have to put in, and you'd think this would take seconds. But first of all, you've got, we're going to put the um, M, M, M.2, M.2, M2, M2, whatever it's called, 223 um, NVMe in. Now, these are stupidly cheap. Um, you know, I remember, you know, NVMe's have got so cheap, which is great for everybody. Um, but I, I, this is my mistake. I thought, oh, I can just put one of mine in. I've got like, like a spare ones, and it, you couldn't you have to get the half iron. But this wasn't expensive at all. It's like forty pounds. Um, but this catch on here, which is very clever, caught him out slightly. Caught me out. Um, I mean, he's trying to work out how does that go in there. It's a jigsaw puzzle. I mean, he's never done this before. Bless, you know. Giving it his first shot. Selexar Play. I think it's got four thousand, five thousand writes per second speed. Yeah, there's a little black catch at the back there. And I think we cut in a minute because I had to show him it. And he sort of sussed out how to put the put it in the receptor, but he hadn't cracked the back bit, that you know, that bit at the back there with the that catch. It just wouldn't come up. But he got there with it. So yeah, that he just found it hard to pull up. Yeah. You can see there's some tabs on there as well. You can actually take out that whole CPU bar, I believe. But take the battery out, take the CPU part out, and it's all supposed to be replaceable. Yeah, we've got it in there. And the next bit's the RAM. Now, I think there's an epic, epic here. Anybody who's had to un get RAM out of packaging knows the pain here. It doesn't want to come out. Because it's one like a super fragile PCB, you don't really want to, you know, you don't want to bend it. But so it's like, I think we went with a knife. I think there's scissors. There's all sorts of bits and bobs that went on here uh, to, get the, to get the RAM working properly. We'll get the RAM out the packaging, sorry. But yeah. So yeah, so you know, Amarchi's gonna work on any of these laptops. I've sort of given the game away here. Um and this is one of the things that you know, I think other people who've been watching my videos have sort of found that it it installs so easily and it works. And I suppose um DHH and the guys at is it 37 signals or the guys who are doing this. They've got multiple different types of hardware, probably lots of old Macs sitting around, laptops and stuff like that. And so they just needed to go onto anything. Because I suppose, I mean, lots of companies have probably got their own versions of internal operating systems, like own versions of Linux, not Windows. But And they've got a variety of hardware. So there's probably other versions of things like Amarchi out there within corporate entities where they just come in. I'm sure there's some visual effects houses that use Linux. Well, they'll have their own operating system that's been sorted out and they just install it. But Amarchi is a you know, bit of a revelation, isn't it? Because normally if you install Arch, you've got to go through all the steps and everything like that to get it on. It's not you know, as user-friendly as it could be. And I've seen a lot of um, Linux guys talking about the fact that for a Mac user, it's like the ideal jump across to code to Linux. It's more for a Windows user, you know, I don't know how they feel about it, but it's sort of for Mac user, for me, I'm an ex-Mac ex -Mac user. I'm just nearly there, moving across. I don't think, I mean, that. now after seeing that framework laptop, I think my next laptop will either be a framework or a System76. My other machine, my big machine, is a is a machine I built myself, which is a Ryzen 9. It's one for Minis Form. I put it all together. Probably seen it on lots of my videos. Very happy with that. But laptop-wise, yeah, I think that um, it'll be a framework or a, a System76 to play with. 
Now, this is, me and him both got this wrong with the ram. He has he's worse than me because he, he was pointing in the opposite direction. But there's these two slots, one on the top and one on the bottom, and it only takes it's one dim. It doesn't it's two. But you look at it and you're thinking, now, he had it right there. He did just didn't commit. He had it right because I put it in wrong because I was getting a bit confused. There's only one dim on this. There's not dual channel memory. So I think I think I dad in yeah he's right there, but he just needs to push it in. But I'm thinking that doesn't go in. Does that go in? Yeah, I've got it wrong because it goes it goes face down. There we go, and I managed to get it in for him. No, I've got it wrong again. Then you snap it down, and then the flap goes back over. There we go. So yeah, so this is basically it. We're just inspecting the tabs there. So he's got to put the keyboard on. He was diving in for the I.O. And this is interesting. It sort of just sits on and then it sort of snaps. And then there's screws on the base. So he had a go at pushing it. And I think it's one of these things he's been a bit brave because it needs a bit of a shove to get that keyboard attached. So I think I stepped in again just to get it done. And he, he came from the back. I went in from the front with it. So yeah, 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 here we go. Ideal. And then just push it down. It just pops. You can feel it. It's quite secure. See everything wobbling now. Yeah, there we go. Sorry about that. And now you just flip it. And I think I've sped this bit up because I don't think we wanted to endure him screwing everything in. So yeah, so just flip it over and there's five or six, seven. Here we are. So he's going to do this super, super quick, super speedy. That screwdriver is great. It's great to have the tool in there to, to, to do this. And just whiz round. If you've ever tried to open the back of a Mac, one of the older Macs that you can actually access, and you needed very specific size screwdrivers, it was an epic. There was tiny screws, big screws, and they're just chaos. I mean, all the Mac stuff is designed not for you to work on. I mean, I, I don't like the philosophy, and hopefully the you know kids will pick up on this. It's like making stuff that you can't, uh, you know, you have to buy another one, which is Mac is completely done. Everything's sealed. You have to buy a new one. Completely consumerizes it. And it's sort of alienated people like me that, you know, I, I don't mind putting Macs for RAM in. I want to get a life out of everything, but even like locked black boxes aren't great. Anyway, so here we go. He's put the IO in, and we got two USB-C, one HDMI, and a USB. B A, I think it is, and they just slide in at the side and they snap into place. And as I said, you can use these on any of the framework uh, computers. Yeah, no, framework, I love it. It's a great idea. Mac, I'm totally going off of actually. They're, we're locked into devices, aren't we? You have to, iPhones, everything is sealed and you can't really do anything to it. Um, some, I think some of the Macs you can, some of the Mac minis you can replace from, but that's rubbish. You want a life out of it. I mean, looking at that, it looks like I can pull out the whole CPU unit and put another one in the future, which is amazing. Because, I mean, why would I need to replace the screen? The screen is great. Why would I need to replace the keyboard? It's still working. Do you know what I mean? It's just crazy. But Apple want you to buy a new thing. And they're very smart. And I was thinking about this the other day. They, their marketing department's absolutely nailed it because their numbering and the way that they do things is really, really simple. So with the in new Intel chips, Ultra, 2, 5, whatever, I have no idea. Don't know what's faster than what. Have no idea. Bigger number, possibly. Even the graphics card manufacturers have sort of got it nailed a bit, like 5060. The 5070 must be better. The 5080 must be better. The 5090 must be better. But with PC chips, you, you sort of have no idea what you're getting. I mean, like Ryzen 9, 7, 5, you mean 9? What does that mean? Mac have nailed it, haven't they? Every time they bring something out, it's just incremental. So the M4 is faster than the M3. The M3 is faster than the M2. Oh, and he's finished it. There you go. Talked over the top. But yeah, they've sort of nailed it. And they've made it very easy for consumer to go, that must be faster. I'll buy that. And that doesn't exist in the PC world. It's so complicated and so convoluted. There's the laptop. All done. So now we're going to whiz in a march. I've sped this bit up for you as well. Um, now, here's the big problem with this and this is a bad mark against framework when you first do this you put the usb key in there's a blank hard drive it boots into the bios it, it like basically boots it's a secure boot and tells you you can't use the usb so 
you'd imagine, and then it says go into the BIOS. You go into the BIOS and it's in there. There's a thing about TMP, but you can't switch it off. So I actually only found this, and maybe they have got it written somewhere on their website, in a forum, because it wasn't just me that was having the same problem. And it, by the way, this is a standard Amarchi install, absolutely no surprises. So what you have to do to do this, when you boot with that in, and you want to switch off secure boot at the beginning, you have to hold down F2. It, and that brings up a totally different menu. And I was looking at all these screen grabs of people in the forums, and they put this menu, have I got that menu? But I couldn't find any documentation apart from there's two threads that say hold down F2. And you hold it down, and then you get this separate menu that comes up, and you can switch into it, and then you can switch off secure boot, and then it goes in easily. So I think I sped this bit up for you as well. But afterwards, I did a Windows 11 installation. It all goes in. The wireless doesn't work. You have to install the driver package, blah, 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 typical whatever. Go through all the rigmarole with Windows, even though I did a Rufus install, so that strips a load of crap out. But yeah, so I had to install a driver package to get it to work properly. At the end of this, I did nothing. At the end of a Remarchi install, I did nothing. It just worked. So that's a big plus for Remarchi, well over the top of um, Windows 11. Yeah, it's a bit of wobbling here. Sorry about this. Sped it up, and then it should get to the end. I think it installed in three minutes, three minutes, 40 seconds or something. Pretty quick. Here we go. And there we are. Can't read that. Three minutes something. And then reboot. And I can never remember when to do this. You you reboot. And then when it goes black, pull the key. But it's telling you to pull the key now. Don't pull the key because it gives you loads of errors that it can't finish something. Anyway, here we go. And then it'll come back up and we're straight into a marching. And it's really nice because it comes up and it gives you this. Sign up to Wi-Fi. Do, like, do your Wi-Fi. Do your uh, updates and off you go. Yeah. It's, it worked. So it just literally goes onto everything and it works. And... Um, that's the wonderful thing about it. Really, really clever. There you go. System update. Do your Wi-Fi network. But I didn't. I sort of closed it down. And that was the end of it. And shut down. There you go. So framework 12. And and then an MRG install. Okay, I switched back to full screen. So there you go. The laptop for a 14 year old boy, apart from knowing which way the RAM went, you can build one. Um, it's a great laptop. We've had a play with it. It's really cool. The whole flipping round of the screen thing is just fantastic. It's touch screen. Really, really nice. And when it gets past about 90 degrees, the keyboard switches off because that was his first question. When it flips over, it goes, well, the key still work, but it doesn't. It just flips over and you can just do what you want. So I forgot to order the um, stylus for him, but I'm going to order that from um, Framework. A March hasn't let me down. Um, I think if you watch some of my other videos, the only machine I can't get it on is a Mac that's from 2009 or something. And that's the Wi-Fi driver fails. But that went straight in. Perfect. And great. So I'm going to do another video shortly about using a Marchi because I've been using it for about two weeks now. Some of the things I've noticed and stuff like that. So keep an eye out for that. I mean, because now I've got it, you want to tweak it. And it's like one of these things where you have to learn to, to tweak it. So anyway, that's an installation on um, a Framework 12 laptop. They're brilliant laptops. I would get one. I highly recommend them. I've seen a lot of laptop reviews saying it's not as good as this. They're great laptops. And put a march on it if you're brave enough um, or whatever. But it's a great step. Framework's a great company. And I tell you what, it, they're well worth supporting. So go and have a look at that. Anyway, as usual, thanks for watching.